Hi, this is Professor LaPuma of the New Jersey Institute of Technology recording for my technical communications class. I'm drawing on my text, Fundamentals of Undergraduate Education and Learning. What we're going to discuss today is more on making definitions to be valid and clear, but in this case we're not just looking to define a word, but understand how a group of words need to be distinguished in order to build understanding of a more complex term. In this case, goal, objective, outcome, and purpose are used to understand success. So the first thing we want to do is look at the four words, goal, objective, outcome, and purpose. For many people, these words are interchangeable, such that they could all mean the same thing or extremely similar things. For other people, there are clear distinctions between words, such that a goal is larger than an objective, but for others, objectives are a larger idea than a goal. For us, the first and most important thing when making a definition is to understand the context. The context will help us narrow how we're doing this. For example, if the context was a lab in which you're using a microscope, an objective might be a part of that microscope. In our case, we're looking at engaging in an endeavor or completing a task. And so we're going to try to define goal, objective, outcome, and purpose with regard to completing a task. The next thing we want to look at is to make distinctions. It's not that we don't understand what these words mean, but we have to be clear that for us, each one of these words is different than the other and has a reason why it is different. Once we clarify this distinction, we can then transfer that or explain that to our target so that they can see the words as we intend them, hopefully reducing ambiguity and getting rid of you know what I mean. Now, why are we doing this? Because we're not just trying to define these words, but we want to use these words to understand how to define the word success. As we said with rule four, if we don't understand these words and how they're distinguished, as we define success, we'll run into trouble. So let's begin with the first word. So the first word is goal. For us, goal is the largest overarching aim of the endeavor. It's what we want to accomplish, when we want to accomplish it, where we're going. Smaller than that for us will be objective. And this is the smaller sub-goal set along the path. It's how we're going to get to that end. As you look at this, each objective actually then becomes a goal of a smaller set of things. When you sum them up, hopefully you've attained your larger goal. So then, what is outcome? For us, outcome measures what actually happened if you attempt to follow the path. It's what was accomplished, and then it's an outcome such that it is something that actually happened. The first two, goal and objective, are planned. Outcomes are actual occurrences. Lastly, we have this idea of purpose. And for us, purpose is the reason behind the, de the choice that you did. Why did you do what you did? What is your motivation behind the decision? Why did you decide to set your goals and objectives in the way you did? In this case, purpose is more about your thinking as you planned your endeavors rather than outcome, which is what happened. Now, for us, these distinctions are very important because we need to know what's the right answer. Why is the way I describe these words better than you? And generally, when you're making definitions, a lot of times there is no right answer. And so you have to default to some way of judging more or less correct. And so for us, there are two ways to do that. We're going to look at authority and consensus. And hopefully, in the end, you use both to understand what is the correct way to define that term in the given situation. So for us, first is authority. And this is referring to some outside or external expertise or person of power to give you the answer. Now, I've told you what I think goal, objective, outcome, and purpose are. The reason you may believe me is because I'm your professor. In other classes that you have, professors may give you a statement of a term or an idea, and you may not agree with it. But within that class, you agree to listen to them because they have the power to give you a grade. Once you leave that class, there's no more authority governing you you may revert back to how you originally thought of the word. The next thing is consensus. And in this case, it's talking about agreeing upon amongst the members of the group what the right answer is or finding common ground. If we think back to the definition of communication, you may not agree with everyone about how to define communication. As we looked at at the radio station model, five different levels could all be considered communication. And depending on how you viewed it, you might agree with some people and disagree with others. The key here is if we can all agree upon the common parts of it, then that subtle difference 
can be agreed upon to disagree. We can leave that subtle narrowing of the definition to that exact answer separate. This is very important when you try to understand what your target will see as what the words mean because both authority and consensus can come together so that you have justification why you came to this and an understanding of how you might change if others don't agree with you. So why are we doing all this? Because we wanted to understand success. For many people, if your outcome matches your goals, you were successful. However, there are other ways to think about success. Some people define success such that the outcome has met the purpose or the reasons why you undertook the endeavor. You may not have accomplished all of your goals and all of your objectives, but if your purpose was satisfied, then you were successful. Other people look at it as a sum of numbers of objectives met. For many students, this is how they view a class. You don't earn a 100 on every assignment, but even so, you may still earn an A. You may not have reached the ultimate goal in every assignment perfectly, but by having enough of the objectives met and accomplishing overall a holistic level, then you're good. Now, there are other measures of success. Many times, a judge will give you a scoring sheet, and certain things absolutely have to be there, and other things are grace notes or added levels. And so, as success becomes more integral to what you're doing and understanding your target, the more difficult it may become to be successful without a good understanding of how you're being judged and the distinctions between the goals, objectives, outcomes, and purposes you're trying to meet. So what you want to think about in the end is that clearly distinguishing your terms is vital, especially when those terms, terms are similar and several of your people who you are trying to target may have a different understanding of it. Also, in the end, your definitions rely upon authority and consensus to give them weight of agreement. If you're working on things by yourself, for yourself, then however you define terms is fine. But as soon as you try to communicate with other people and have them understand the terms in the way you see it, you have to rely upon an authority and consensus to reach this. Part of the reason why we want you to begin to negotiate understanding is that in order to reach consensus, you need to communicate with others to understand what they're thinking and compare it to what you're thinking. Thank you.